acupuncture is a unique therapeutic method that treats diseases by puncturing certain points of the human body with different types of metal needles, promoting smooth circulation of the channel, and adjusting qi and blood by stimulating the points and channels. many kinds of needles adopted for acupuncture treatment. Here, we recommend the treatment with filiform needles. One, structure of filiform needle and its examination. Structurally, the filiform needle can be divided into the tip, the body, the root, the handle, and the tail. Needles made of stainless steel are most commonly used today because of their rust-proofness, heat resistance, hardness, and flexibility. The common filiform needle varies in length and diameter. Needles from 3 to 5 twin in length and 28 to 30 in diameter are often used clinically. Check the filiform needle before using. The tip should be smooth and round shaped as a pine needle to reduce the resistance while operating. To find out whether there's a spur on the tip, we can twist the needle to see if there's any problem. The cotton cushion can be used to examine the condition of needles. The body should be smooth, straight, round, well-proportioned and flexible. While checking the body, pay attention to rust stains and folding scars. The root part of the needle requires special attention. We can put the needle on a smooth desktop, roll it slightly to observe if there's any uneven rolling that suggests distortions or damages. We can either press it to correct it with our fingers or straighten it with bamboo pliers. The webbing filigree should be easy and comfortable to pin. A winding dragon needle is easy to use for beginners. To find out if the webbing filigree has been loosened, we can hold the handle with one hand and with the other hand pinch the body tightly, twisting or pulling in the opposite direction to find out if there is any problem. The tail part of commonly used needles has a T-shape so that the angle and direction can be easily controlled. On the other hand, it is also the part where we wrap the moxa wool on while moxa busting with a warm needle. Sometimes, even the tailless needle can also be used when necessary. In order to prevent cross-infection, operators are encouraged to use sterilized needles no more than once. The selection of new needles always requires scrupulous examination from head to tail. Two, manipulation of filiform needles.
training of finger strength and precise techniques are requirements for acupuncture doctors before clinical application. Practice with sheets of paper. Fold fine soft tissue papers into a small pad, about 7 by 8 centimeters in size and 2 centimeters thick. Then bind the packet with gauze thread. Hold the paper pad with the left hand and the needle handle with the right. Insert the needle into the pad and rotate in and out, clockwise and counterclockwise. Try your best to keep the needle vertical and gradually increase your finger force. Practice with a cotton pad. Make a cotton pad soft on the outside and tight on the inside, wrapped in gauze. Insert the needle and practice the rotating and thrusting movements. Practice on your own body. This may be done by following the manipulation methods on your own body to personally experience the acupuncture sensation in an actual situation. Appropriate posture of the patient is significant for finding correct location of points. Manipulation for acupuncture and moxibustion. The commonly used postures for clinical genuological procedures are as follows. Supine posture is suitable for the points on the anterior region of the body. Prone posture is suitable for points on the posterior region of the body. Lateral recumbent is suitable for points on the lateral side of the body. Supported sitting position is for face, chest, arms, knees, and ankles. Practice face on the desk sitting position is suitable for points on the head, neck, and back. The side-prone sitting position is suitable for points on either side of the face. Other postures often adopted are arm flexed, palm down, arm flexed, palm turned, and arm flexed, palm up positions. Two, sterilization. Before clinical application, needles should be sterilized in an autoclave at 1-1.4 kg per centimeter of atmospheric pressure and 115 to 123 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. Also, we can wrap the needle and equipment with gauze and immerse in boiling water for 20 to 30 minutes.
Sterilized needles should be stored in an antibacteria box. Unused needles should be stored in a box with layers of gauze or with dry cotton balls placed at both ends to protect the needle tip. The pre-sterilized needles have been sterilized in the factory. But we should check the package and expiration date to decide whether they should be re-sterilized before use. Wash your hands before manipulating and then sterilize the fingers with 75% alcohol. Avoid maculating the disinfected area after sterilizing. Three. Method of inserting needles. The right way to hold a needle is holding the head of the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the middle finger, hold the needle with the thumb and index fingers of the right hand. Then with the Pushes firmly against the area close to the point. Commonly used insertion methods are one-hand insertion, injection-like insertion, finger pressing insertion, two-hand insertion, thumb-side insertion, pincer-like insertion, skin stretching insertion. And lift pinch insertion. First, we will introduce one hand insertions. Injecting insertion. Hold the needle body. Use the thumb and index finger of the right hand together with cotton balls. Let the tip expose right over the point. Insert the needle briskly into the skin. Then insert and rotate coordinately into a certain depth with both hands. Finger pressing insertion. Hold the needle with the thumb and index finger of the puncturing hand. With the middle finger leaning against the lower part of the needle body. Press with the finger to insert into the skin. Two hand insertion. Inserting the needle with the pressure of the finger of the pressing hand. Press beside the acupuncture point with the nail of the thumb or index finger of the left hand holding the needle. And then insert the needle into the point. Inserting the needle with the help of the puncturing and pressing hand. Hold the needle tip with the thumb and index finger of the left hand, leaving the tip exposed. And hold the needle handle with the thumb and index finger of the right hand. Insert the needle briskly into the skin with both hands. Insert the needle With fingers stretching the skin tightly, stretch the skin where the points are located with the index and middle finger. Hold the needle with the right hand and insert it into the point. This method is suitable for points on the abdomen where the skin texture is loose. Keep 
皮捏紧针法，用左手的五十二指将数学部的皮捏紧，右手持针从捏起的皮肤处进针。此法主要适用于皮肉浅薄的部位，特别是面部数学的进针。此外，还有捻入式进针法，指弹式进针法和管针进针法等。Besides the method of insertion, the angle, depth, and direction are also important in the process of insertion. Generally, the angle formed by the needle and the insertion can be divided into three kinds. They are perpendicular, oblique, and horizontal. 直刺，针身与皮肤表面呈九十度角垂直，斜刺，针与皮肤表面呈四十五度角倾斜刺路，适用于不能伸刺或不宜伸刺的刺路。This method is used for points close to the important viscera, or where the muscle is thinner. Horizontal. The needle is inserted horizontally or along the skin to form an angle of 15 to 25 degrees with the skin surface. It is often used in areas where the muscle is thin or for piercing through the skin. The depth of needle insertion refers to the depth of the needle body which is inserted into the point. Generally, a proper depth of needling induces better needling sensation without hurting the vital viscera. In ancient China, people divided the depth into superficial, medium, and deep. They named the three depths as heaven, human, and earth. The angle and depth are closely interrelated. Generally, deep insertion is often perpendicular, and shallow usually oblique or horizontal. 3. Post-insertion needle manipulation and the acquisition of qi. There are two basic reinforcing and reducing methods. One, basic post-insertion needle manipulation, lifting and thrusting the needle. After the needle is inserted to a given depth and the needling sensation appears, twisting the needle into the deep area and lift it to the superficial area. Repeat lifting and thrusting several times. The lifting and thrusting amplitude is better controlled within 3 to 5 fun and with low frequency. Another method is twirling and rotating. After the needle is inserted to a certain depth, twirl and rotate the needle. The amplitude of twirling and rotating is best controlled within 100 to 160 degrees. A needle should not be twirled and rotated clockwise or counterclockwise alone, or it may cause a true pain. In order to reflect the precise manipulating method objectively and to measure the amplitude, frequency, and force of finger movement scientifically, the Acupuncture and Moxibustion Department of Shanghai Traditional Chinese Medicine College invented the first acupuncture manipulating instrument in China. The first and second kinds of waveforms show the swaying phenomenon. Generally speaking, the more experienced the doctor is, the less evident the waveform becomes. Now, let's examine the third and fourth waveforms reflected. The third wave indicates twirling and rotating. If the needle turns counterclockwise, the wave peak goes up. And when it turns clockwise, the wave peak lowers. Meanwhile, we can also find out the amplitude, frequency, and equilibrium of twirling and rotating. The 
fourth wave indicates lifting and thrusting. The downward wave means thrusting, and the upward means lifting. The wave also reflects the amplitude and frequency of lifting and thrusting of the needle. Using this instrument, we can examine the manipulating quality of the students and evaluate their finger force as well as the manipulating method. It provides a scientific basis for the teaching of acupuncture. It provides a scientific basis for the teaching of acupuncture. It provides a scientific basis for the teaching of acupuncture. Besides essential manipulating methods, some other methods known as subsidiary manipulations are often used. Needle guiding method. Pressing. If qi fails to arrive after manipulation, we can press along the channel in order to promote circulation of qi and blood. Snapping method. Snapping the handle of the needle with the finger causes it to vibrate to strengthen the stimulation. Needle scraping method. Scraping. When the needle is in place, use the thumb and index finger of the left hand to support the body of the needle where it enters the skin. With the thumb of the right hand placed on the end holding the needle steadily, scrape the needle from bottom to top with the nail of the right index or middle finger. Scraping is used to spread the needling stimulation. Shaking method. Shaking. 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 Shaking
但有时也会出现不得气的现象。在针刺不得气的情况下，我们还可以采用一些方法促使其得气，如留针后气，将针留在穴位内以待气循。在留针过程中，还可以间歇行针。留针时间的长短一般是病情而定，通常为十至二十分钟。If the patient has only a little needling sensation, the method of promoting, such as pressing and plucking, should be used. For reinforcing qi, for patients who suffer from qi deficiency syndrome, we can adopt some methods to reinforce the needling sensation of the other points which have already acquired qi. Or we may combine with moxibustion. The last step of acupuncture is withdrawing. Press the skin around the point with a sterilized cotton ball. Then withdraw quickly and press the punctured point for a while to prevent bleeding. Then withdraw quickly and press the punctured point for a while. Check the needles after withdrawal. Don't leave any needles on the patient's body. Let the patient rest for a while and keep the operating area clean to avoid infection. Four, commonly used methods of reinforcement and reduction. It is stated that the process of acupuncture, besides knowing the location of the points, one should also be familiar with the reinforcing and reducing methods. Reinforcement by lifting and thrusting the needle first superficially and then deeply. Lift the needle gently and slowly. While thrusting it forcefully and rapidly, after the needle is inserted to a designated depth and the needling sensation felt, lift the needle gently and slowly while thrusting it forcefully and rapidly. The waveform shown on the screen shows this manipulation. Reducing by lifting and thrusting the needle. When the needle is inserted to a certain depth, rotate the needle clockwise with the thumb gently and slowly with small amplitude, resulting from clockwise twisting. The wave peak goes upward, as shown on the screen. This technique is shown as a reinforcement and reduction technique. Reinforcing by twirling the needle gently. When the needle is inserted to a certain depth, rotate the needle clockwise with the thumb gently and slowly with small amplitude. Resulting from the clockwise twisting, the wave peak goes upward, as shown on the screen. Reducing by twirling and rotating the needle. Unlike reinforcing, reducing is obtained by rotating the needle counterclockwise with the thumb rapidly with large amplitude. Of the counterclockwise twirling, the wave peak comes down, as shown on the screen. Reinforcement by rapid and slow insertion and withdrawal of the needle. 
真刺时，进针慢，小敏转，出针快。By rapid and slow insertion and withdrawal of the needle. Just in the opposite procedure, this method is obtained by inserting it rapidly and withdrawing it slowly. Reinforcing achieved by the direction the needle tip is pointing to. The direction of the needle tip follows the running course of the channel in this reinforcing method. 针刺时，针尖随着经脉循行方向顺经而刺。Reducing achieved by the direction the needle tip is pointing to requires the needle tip to point downward against the channel course. 针刺时，针尖迎着经脉循行方向逆经而刺，称为凝髓泻法。Forcing achieved by means of respiration. The reinforcing is achieved by insert needle when the patient breathes in and withdrawing the needle when the patient breathes out. Reducing achieved by means of respiration. This is achieved by inserting the needle when the patient breathes out and withdrawing it when the patient breathes in. Reinforcement achieved by opening and closing. Rub and press the point after withdrawing the needle. Reducing achieved by opening and closing. Enlarge the point after withdrawing the needle in order to expel the evil. Normal reinforcement and reduction methods. Even reinforcing the needle. Lift, thrust, and rotate the needle evenly and gently at moderate speed to cause a mild sensation. And withdraw the needle at moderate speed as well. Five. The treatment and prevention of complications. Although acupuncture is safe and free from side effects, some accidents may take place owing to overlooking the contraindications, imperfect manipulations, or the lack of anatomical knowledge. Fainting during acupuncture treatment. This is often caused by nervous tension, weakened health condition, hunger, fatigue, excessive bleeding, sweating, or diarrhea, or improper position or forceful manipulation. When the fainting aura appears, stop needling immediately and withdraw all the needles. Then help the patient to lie down with their head lower and feet higher, and give him some warm water. The symptoms will disappear after a short rest. In severe cases, in addition to the above management, needle Renzong, June 26, Su Liao, June 25, Nei Guan, Pericardium 6, Zhu San Li, Stomach 36, or apply moxibustion to Bai Hui, Du 20, Guan Yuan, Ren 4, and the patient will respond. In order to prevent the patient from fainting, a lying posture should be adopted for weak and sensitive patients or for one who has never taken acupuncture treatment before. During the process, manipulating the needle gently and not taking too many points at one time is best.
Patients who are hungry or thirsty eat or drink a little and rest for a while before operating. Sticking of the needle. After the needle is inserted, it is found that at times the needle is difficult or impossible to rotate, lift, and thrust, and the patient feels acute pain. This is called a stuck needle. It may arise from nervousness, strong spasm of the local muscle after insertion, or twirling of the needle with too large an amplitude or in one direction only. When sticking of the needle appears, ask the patient to relax. If the stuck needle is caused by the temporary cramping of the muscle, leave the needle in place for a while or massage the skin near the point to distract the patient. To prevent needles from being stuck, we should advise sensitive patients to relax. 应先做好解释工作，消除顾虑，放松肌肉。医生手法要轻，捻转角度不要过大，并可适当配合提插法，将针起出。Twirling with too large an amplitude, or only in one direction, should in no case be allowed. Bending of the needle. 弯针。This may result from unskillful manipulation or overpowering manipulation, or having the needle strike hard tissue, or sudden change of the patient's posture for different reasons, or an unexpected striking of the needle's handle. When the needle is bent, lifting, thrusting, and rotating should in no case be applied. The needle may be removed slowly and withdrawn by following the course of the bend. In case the bent needle is caused by a change in the patient's posture, move him to his original position, relax the local muscle, and then remove the needle. Don't try to withdraw the needle with force. Therefore, perfect insertion and gentle manipulation are required. The patient should be in a proper and comfortable posture. And during the retaining period, a change of posture is not allowed. The needling area should not be impacted or pressed by any external force. Breaking of the needle. Broken needles may arise from poor quality of the needle, or erodent base of the needle, or from overpowered manipulation of the needle, strong muscle spasms, or a sudden weakness of the patient when the needle is in place. When it happens, the patient should be asked to stay calm to prevent the broken part from protruding from the skin. Remove it with forceps or fingers. If the broken part is at the same level of the skin, press the tissue around the side until the broken end is exposed. Then remove it with forceps. If it is completely under the skin, surgery should be considered. If it is completely under the skin, surgery should be considered. If it is To prevent accidents, careful inspection of the quality of the needle should be made prior to the treatment. The needle body should not be inserted into the body completely and take immediate action to remove bent or stuck needles. Hematoma. Hematoma may result from injuries of the blood vessels by the needle. If bleeding persists, apply local pressing or light massage or warming moxibustion after stopping the bleeding with cold towels to help disperse the hematoma. Therefore, careful pressing of cold points after withdrawal is the best method adopted to prevent hematoma. Precautions Points for attention during acupuncture. 
对于饥饿、疲劳、精神高度紧张症、注意力立即进行针刺，对体质虚弱患者，手法不宜过强，并应尽量选用卧轨。Who should be in a lying posture? For pregnant women, it is contraindicated to needle the points on the abdomen and lumbar region and points causing strong sensations such as hergu, sanjiao, kunlun, and ji. Points on the vertex of infants should not be needled when the fontanelle is not closed. Skin conditions such as infection, ulceration, scars, or tumor of the skin is contraindicated to needles. Patients who frequently bleed spontaneously should not be needled. The operator should be familiar with anatomy in order to prevent accidents. Needling the points involved with the eyeballs requires preciseness of angle and depth. Under no conditions should excessive lifting and thrusting, twirling and rotating, or prolonged retaining of the needle be used. This is because they may injure the eyeball or cause bleeding. Points of the nape and spinal area should be carefully needled with definite angle and depth. Any excessive manipulation or prolonged retaining of the needle may injure the vital organs. Points besides the 11th thoracic vertebra in the back and above the 8th intercostal space along the midline of axillary and above the 6th intercostal space along the midline of clavicle can't be needled perpendicularly or deeply. Otherwise, it may cause injury to the heart and lungs. We should pay especially close attention to patients with emphysema to avoid serious accidents such as pneumothorax. Avoid needling vertically or deeply into points within the lumbus or hypochondrium areas to avoid injuring the spleen and kidneys. Pay close attention to patients with liver and spleen enlargement symptoms. Avoid needling vertically or deeply to points around the gastric cavity when the stomach is full. Otherwise, the needle will pierce the gastric wall and the gastric contents will spread out and cause serious contamination. Sendai kerja cipu lepas, cipu yang fangcu, kembali jumpu dengan kongfu.